fundamentals of the economy um, already justify further upgrades, and we are actually determined to do uh, whatever is necessary to convince not only the rating agencies, but everyone, the local business community, the international investor community, that uh, uh, we have uh, actually fixed everything which was wrong uh, in, with our economy and that we are now on a healthy, sustainable path of the recovery and growth. I would basically mention and highlight the, uh, the significance of the key productive sectors of the economy, the resilience which uh, they demonstrated and their potential to grow more. So we have a number of uh, such key industries which have really been able to withstand the difficulties of the past few years and, and, and are now um, performing very, very well. And from our side, from the side of the government, we did what, whatever we could to create favorable conditions for them to grow. We believe in private enterprise, we believe in entrepreneurship, we believe in uh, creating conditions which will facilitate local and foreign investment and we know that in this way uh, we guide the economy uh, towards economic growth, recovery, job creation, we provide opportunities and uh, this is exactly what Cyprus currently offers, a good combination of uh, well-established uh, productive sectors of the economy with the potential to grow more but also with the new sectors uh, which are up and uh, coming and are contributing to this uh, very satisfactory growth rate. So we are expecting growth rate which will be between 3-3.5% three, three annually for the next few years. We have shown uh, that there is an alternative path which uh, combines fiscal consolidation and I am a strong believer of fiscal consolidation. I do not believe that it is uh, wise for any economy to spend more than it earns more than, more than it produces. Um, so um, uh, that sh should be absolutely clear, but at the same time uh, I do not believe that this fiscal consolidation can be achieved by, raise, by raising taxes, um, especially not during a downturn when households and business are already um, strained. So um, aligning uh, streamlining, even reducing um, public expenditure is the key and let me say that that's what we did but we, but we only did it once, a, a fast uh, elimination of the deficit which has um, since enabled us to maintain tax certainty, that's very important for business, tax certainty and actually as fiscal space is being created it has enabled us to promote significant tax breaks and tax uh, reductions which uh, give a further boost to, uh, to economic activity and uh, surprise, surprise, when you do that uh, public revenues actually increase without raising taxes so we are actually able now to, to increase public expenditure and to promote some new policies and some additional public sector investment in infrastructure which is much needed so I think this is a, a good policy mix, uh, the alternative, uh, as, as I would say, to the growth versus austerity dilemma. Confidence is the key, is, is the key word. Also when referring to the banking sector, it was the loss of confidence which essentially derailed our banking sector, which was unable to maintain deposits and it was unable to to attract uh, new investment in the form of uh, much needed capital. So. Uh, the fact that action was taken on the banking sector also improved uh, supervision and oversight, the new corporate governance rules uh, gradually but steadily uh, resulted in the restoration of confidence. We have seen a, a significant influx of foreign investors in our banking sector which have uh, injected uh, new capital, thus um, making our banking sector stronger and uh, uh, that resulted in the restoration of depositor confidence which uh, made the lifting of those capital restrictions uh, possible. Challenges are still being faced by the banking sector. I mean the stock of non-performing loans which is a legacy problem, a problem of the past, will still take time for it to be fully, fully resolved but even there progress is being made from the moment that conditions of 
confidence has been restored from the moment that there is a sense of uh, financial stability being restored, I think we're on a right path there also. First of all, we changed all the relevant laws, um, making them more efficient uh, in the direction of the workout of this uh, legacy problem of non-performing loans. Uh, the central bank directives on loan restructurings have also been amended to take into consideration all the dimensions of the problem. Uh, the banks also have um, invested in uh, setting up new capacity uh, in order to manage th these problems and uh, now even additional steps are being taken with the establishment of management platforms, bringing in expertise which will um, facilitate and enable an even, an even faster workout of this problem. Still, um, I should emphasize that the uh, process will be gradual. Uh, there is no quick fix solution, nor should we attempt a very rapid correction of this problem. We should maintain momentum and we should ensure that the recovery of the economy, the growth of the economy, which is the key requirement when it comes to the problem of NPLs also, obviously because a growing economy better improves the capacity of households and business to repay their loans. So um, this delegate balance which we have for now uh, secured should be maintained. Rather, we are doing everything else which is necessary to ensure that our economy is on a path of recovery and growth, um, viewing the energy sector as a hugely important over and above prospect. Uh, and I think that's the prudent approach to take. And reforms should be a never-ending process, so that's the path that we are uh, following. The energy sector will be hugely important, but it's, it's, uh, it's a sector with a very long time frame. The revenue stream is um, uh, still a few years ahead of us, and even when it commences, it will be uh, over a very long-term horizon. Hugely important for Cyprus, hugely important also at the regional level, important also for the EU itself as a whole, because it will add a new dimension to the um, energy mix of the EU. And that's exactly why we are, as a government, we have been working very ac actively in uh, forging a regional network of cooperation, primarily on energy, but also on uh, all the other issues of uh, uh, economic uh, policy, uh, security, um, uh, creating a scenario of, of stability, because that's what I believe the Eastern Mediterranean can be, um, uh, an area of um, um, stability, cooperation and exchange. On, on the one hand, uh, I mean, if one looks back, uh, it is as if the EU has been making progress from one crisis to the other. So let's not make the mistake or uh, to believe that it's only now that the European integration process has been facing um, challenges or even crises. Uh, it seems that's the norm. On the other hand, I wouldn't underestimate the challenges that we are currently facing and um, the need to be very cautious in making additional steps in the direction of European integration. I'm not, I'm not against uh, making further steps in the direction of European integration. I believe it is crucial uh, to ensure that any such steps um, enjoy popular support and uh, uh, a very clear, undisputed, democratic legitimacy. Uh, if you ask me, that th this is at the core of the contemporary challenges that the EU is facing, uh, the, need to, the need for the EU to ensure that it's not making steps uh, either on uh, economic policy or in any other policy through an obscure process which is not transparent, which is uh, bureaucratic rather than political and which does not enjoy the support of the people. So this is where I would recommend that we focus our attention. It's not a question of whether further integration is needed or not. It's a question of how um, European integration should be promoted from now on. Uh, and it should be promoted in a, in a manner which does not ignore uh, the people. I would highlight the need for uh, our EU economies to become probably less bureaucratic, less uh, regulated when, where regulation is not efficient and well-targeted and to ensure that the 
productive forces in our economies are uh, uh, not burdened uh, by unnecessary bureaucracy and regulation. We should uh, realize that we are not alone in this world, that we, we live and function in a, a globalized, highly competitive world, and um, uh, uh, we should do whatever is necessary to further enhance the the competitiveness of our economies and to make our economies even more attractive for uh, business and investment. Bearing in mind also that that's what the European community was all about uh, when it was established a few decades ago. It was about freedom of movement of goods, freedom of movement of capitals and services and that's where we should uh, focus our, our, our attention, uh, liberalizing the productive forces of the EU and of our societies. Mm -hmm.